All right, hello and welcome. Uh, so, uh, on Twitter, Steve's Twitter, we got some information, kind of, uh, about a work in progress for Star Trek 3.0. Uh, and he's answered some questions on Twitter and stuff that I kind of want to go over, uh, because I think it might be very important for what Star Trek 3.0 is actually going to be. So, he put up this video, which is a Vine, uh, that you can see from his Twitter for Star Trek 3.0, and kind of some rough patchwork of it. He warned that it's rough work in progress, so it's obviously not final, uh, but this is kind of the roughness of what, like, what we're going to get, kind of, apparently. At least for right now, uh, this is the plan. Uh, and the thing that immediately worries me about this is that there are so many nodes, and that, coupled with a couple of things that he's said, has me worried about some of uh, the possible things that we're going to see here. So... Let's go into some of those tweets, and I'm going to just size this down just a little bit and throw it over here so you guys can keep analyzing that if you'd like to, and we should look at these. So, uh, I'm just going to go in the order, like from top down, like most recent. Uh, so the first is this one where he says, def, this is in response to Jonas, who says that would it make sense to have a search function. If they're going to keep this many nodes, they need to have a search function, because it's just... It's going to be a mess otherwise. Um, one of the main problems with Starshark 1.0, which this is very similar to in appearance at the very least, was that it was hard to be like, unless you knew where a place was because you've been there so many times, it's like, well, which fucking place is Sparga? Where's War at exactly? I don't even remember. Um, so there's not a search function. That'd be a huge downside. It's nice that they're thinking about that, which is good. Uh, this one is... I don't know. That's a different thing. Nope, nope, nope. Here it is. Okay, so for this one, uh, the um, planets, planets being rotatable. So right now, obviously, you can spin the planet around to see other nodes. They want to make it so we don't have to do that. So we can kind of see everything on any planet that we want, which is good. But there's one down here that's very... There's, well, there's two things. This one is the blowing up the void type thing. What's happening to the void? would love to get prime rewards and not be stuck in the void tiles forever. So... That is exactly the plan. Voidish rips, but in other cool-looking places. Now, the thing about that that's interesting is that right now we can kind of get to the void whenever we want, and we can just go there. If they change it to be... this, It's, it's either a really good change or a really awful change. If they make it harder to get to the void, but make, and like, make us go through the star chart to get to those places. Because it'll make it very hard to farm the void like consistently on the same mission over and over alternatively there could be like tons and tons of void nodes that will randomly pop up that will have a way lower drop table of things that you can get from them so when those like void tears would be open it would be easier to get items that's like the dream scenario where it's like uh instead of a pool of say six items that each have like a like um whatever drop rate an even drop rate for all of them let's say um, you have, instead you'd have a void tear that can, that has like a 50-50, it's either this part or this part, which is a lot more containable and like less farmy, but with more kind of waiting involved, and it would maybe make it so we go to these void tears all the time, and you're kind of just hitting all of them at all times, which is pretty interesting. So, that, that's either going to go the way of we're making it harder to get to the void and things suck, because it's still just as hard to farm, or alternatively, there are going to be a bunch of void rips that have a bunch of different types of items in them. Uh, like, let's say you've got, like, the worm carapace and, like, carrier prime blueprint on one node, but it's only there, like, every couple hours unless you use a key to open it. It's like, that would be interesting uh, and probably a lot of fun, actually, to interact with the star chart in that way. But it's really hard to say how that's going to pan out. One way or another, it's going to be either really good or fucking awful. It, I don't think there's going to be an in-between, because right now we're at the in-between for that. Uh, da -da -da. There's one other one here. Oh, this one here. This is this is kind of like clearing up something that I thought maybe uh, he says later on in here. But we'll still have resource access. Like the whole region will still be these resources, and the bosses will still always be there. Uh, which is good news, because having rotating out bosses would be awful, because then people would not be able to progress. Uh, oh, also, the preview here that we're seeing, this is all unlocked. Like, this is, like, what it looks like if all the nodes are unlocked. So we don't know what a locked format of the star chart looks like. Um... 
think this is it. Okay, yeah, here it is. Okay, <clears throat> so here's here's one thing that he says that I'm pretty worried about. Uh, he says in response to Squid and stuff. How many nodes do you think we'll have in Star Trek 3.0? What will happen to the Master from the old nodes? Influx, thinking total locations the same, mastery the same, rotating missions, and new player critical path. So this is worrying, and the reason it's worrying is because you'll have the same, like, total locations, which is roughly, like, we've got, what, is it, um, like, 280 nodes, I think? Um, I'll put the, the correct numbers right there. Let's just say the correct numbers right there. Um, that's a lot of nodes, and tons of those are unpopulated, and I don't think rotating those in and out, unless there's some special mechanic around that, um, is going to be that useful, and we'll just make it so that players that want to complete their star chart can't complete it whenever they want, and instead would be restrictive. Uh, alternatively, the other shitty thing about this is the... Okay, so there are three nodes that immediately come to my mind whenever I think about the star chart, because they're the ones that I think are run pretty much the most, um, not counting bosses, and that's Draco, Huracan, Triton. There are obviously some other ones, and like the, the ones that get run the most have been rotated around a little bit as things change. Uh, obviously, like the Viver fiasco and stuff, that was the most run mission at one point, I'm sure. Those things change over time, which is fine. But if they have the same total locations and mastery same, rotating missions, that's the part. Like, we go to Draco to level things quickly. What if we just had no Draco, like, this day? Like, you just can't level things on Draco. That would suck. That would just be terrible. Because now you can't go level things effectively because you have no place to do that. So you have to just level it by just having it around with you. So you level slowly. Triton and Huracan are core farming zones. Although, your Huracan is more for keys and credits. So unless because Huracan is a dark sector, it would stay... That would, like, you could rotate out, like, your good ways to do things in favor of having a bunch of missions that might mean nothing. Now, the, the obviously, like, that's, like, the, uh, like, dark techno future that is, like, the worst thing of all time. The positive spin that could be put on this is if we have rotating missions where the rotated-in missions have value. So let's say, for example, you've got, like, your baseline, which is, like, your new player critical path, which goes through the bosses, and there's a few missions, like, between them, and you're just, like, rotating in. But then you have, like, vastly more alerts that actually give you good rewards, where you're dropping in missions that's, like, hey, there's an exterminate that just showed up on this planet, and, like, there's another alert on this planet. It's, like, well, those are five rare cores each. And it's, like, okay, well, we're directing players to these special alert missions that actually are giving good rewards. What's on this mission? Oh, it's a capture, and it's a T3 um, defense key or whatever. Doing, ma Making it be more active and sporadic with, like, where you're going for, like, the things you would normally just, like, farm endlessly for in, like, uh, survival defense or excavation would be a lot more interesting and be super fun to be able to, like... Well, what's happening here? Well, this is go 10 waves on defense, and then we're going to give you fucking, like, a, a key and some cores or whatever. Uh, or, like, a bunch of credits. Maybe more treasury ships or something. So there, there's a really awesome way that this could go, and then there's, like, the obvious dark future way that this could go, where it's like, well, we can't farm anything now because those nodes aren't available. So... There's a lot of back and forth there about how that could actually go, uh, and I'm very worried about it, because it's... There's that potential that it's either the worst or fantastic, and I don't think that we're going to get fantastic 100% of the time, because it's hard to do that. Yeah. Uh, and then this is... Oop, doo -doo -doo. We want this too. I think this was one of them... More difficult levels show up so we can play those planets have a bit more of a challenge. That's like kind of like higher level alerts would show up on lower planets, uh, which I think is fine. Not really is very super important. Uh, thought you were trying to drastically reduce the number of nodes. People aren't insanely spread out, not add even more. Yeah, definitely reducing active at a time, but using existing data set for now. Obviously that could change. They could cut down the number of nodes and we get to have things that are a lot more focused. Um, but yeah, that is the Star Trek 3.0 stuff. Um, there were just a lot of things being said by Steve, and obviously like, good questions from the Twitter community a lot of the time, uh, that I thought you guys would find interesting. Uh, I hope that Star Trek 3.0 is good, but I'm very worried about it. So, with me being worried about it, and with a lot of the tweets kind of 
pushing the idea that the mastery rank would be the same and the, the same number of missions relatively um and reducing the number of like active missions you have at a time the thing that i definitely like really want to drive home here is that you should finish the star chart if you have any intention of finishing the star chart you should do so right now uh, that should happen as soon as you possibly can you should finish the star chart uh, because we might get Star Trek 3.0 and then it might be very hard to finish the star chart. It might be incredibly difficult. So you should probably do that now. Uh, but yeah, that is, uh, and also this is obviously on Steve's Twitter and he's a fucking designer and stuff on Warframe, but this is not exactly through a like super, like it's not at, at play Warframe is not tweeting this stuff out. So it's all in development. None of it is official. Don't like freak out super hard about it. Definitely ask questions about it, though, because he, obviously he knows what he's doing. Like, he's creating it, and, like, things are happening. Uh, but obviously none of this stuff is final. Uh, and, yeah, I think that's all I got. So I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. I hope Star Trek 3.0 is really good.